Hey peoples, it's me Tristan and in this video I'm gonna show you how I paint the German dot camo. Here's uh, for example my 50mm. On these smaller scale miniatures I've been a bit more liberal with that dot camo idea. I wanted to achieve a general look. When you look at uh, pictures online then I basically went for that but we'll just scale the picture down and that's the thing I wanted to achieve. Not that much detail in those. Here's a 28mm miniature from Warlord Games. That was my test mini. I'm not satisfied how the jacket came out so I'll change a few colors in that but I'm fairly satisfied with the pants and the helmet. I didn't go for the historically correct. I just wanted to achieve the general look of the dot pattern camo. And the miniature I'm gonna paint is this one. As most of my miniatures I prime them with gray primer. Already done the skin tones and I start off with Vallejo game color leather brown and I'm painting on a good base coat of it onto the pants and the helmet and this will turn into a really nice yellowish brownish camo pattern and I will paint the jacket later on with with the second uh, type of a camo pattern then I go on to sepia shade which is a really good and handy tool and I give the base coated parts a heavy wash and I'm not concerned with it pooling because the pooling actually gives a really good effect for painting camo pattern and then I'm gonna let it fully dry once it's dried I'm going on with heavy gray and I'll start painting up on the camo these blobs of heavy gray I will form the base of the P dot camo pattern because if you look at it, it's not just dots, but underneath it, it is the these blobs of uh, different colors. Why I chose heavy gray is because isn't that much in contrast with the wash leather brown, and I think it gives a really nice, smooth and uh, earth earthy tone to it. Now to finish the yellowish brownish camo pattern, I go on with desert yellow and start to paint on these dots and uh, I'm not really concerned with perfect little dots because I'm going for more of a visual similarity not a real thing and because it is a 28 millimeter miniature you can't do the real thing anyways but there are some good techniques of getting really good dots on the miniature for example uh, using a toothpick uh, what you do is you take the toothpick and uh, put the tip of it into the paint and just tap on the dots on the miniature on the parts where you want the camo to be and there's a good uh, tutorial for tutorial uh, for using it and I will link it in the end of this video and also in the description box below and now for the dark brownish greenish camo I'm gonna use heavy gray as a base coat paint it on the cloak and I'm not really concerned with getting the paint on all these details like belt buckles and the weapon and the canisters on his back because I will be painting them over anyways in later st in a later stage that's probably why I'm always painting from the closest to the furthest start with the skin and start painting uh, like in layers as uh, I'm by that I mean I'll do the skin then let's say a shirt and a jacket and then like belts or uh, weapons on the jacket and so on, so on and so forth again me using my handy tool the sepia shade and once again I'm giving a heavy wash you can see that the wash pools a little bit but it's all working in my benefit because it'll form this uh, like lighter and secondary blobs on the jacket which I really like and you really have to wait until the wash dries totally because painting on wash that's a little bit wet or washing uh, paint that's uh, a little bit wet is, is a disaster then I start doing on the little color blobs on the jacket with leather brown it gives the whole jacket a nice yellowish glow and I'm trying to keep the blobs I'm spacing them in just enough so I could uh, add different colored blobs in between them and not cover up the base coat of the jacket 
and as the secondary color I'm using heavy green and once again I'm just gonna paint on these blobs and that's why I base the leather brown bob blobs to leave green color some room I really like how this makes the jacket pop I think it, it would already be rather okay if I left it into this stage but I'm going for the P dots so uh, using the same color I'm gonna just do a single dot on every one of the leather brown blobs P dot camo jackets and stuff had different colored dots in them but as this is a 28 mil miniature and I'm not going for the real thing um, doing just these lonely dots on the leather brown and I think it does the trick one could always do more but I'm going on with uh, camouflage green how convenient that it's named like that so once again I start just painting on the dots and now I'm going uh, all over the place now in hindsight I think I might have overdone it a little bit but I let you decide so one thing painting on these dots I forgot on the test mini is that painting underneath the arms I had to later I had to go back and do it again because it's uh, really easy to forget this especially if, if I'm filming or something and by the way I haven't uh, filmed me myself painting for a long time so that's uh, that's why I'm moving the miniature around most of the time so if you're getting motion sickness I'm sorry that was not my agenda and finally the P dot camo is done let's see if we can finish the whole miniature the miniature is all finished up now so here is done and I think it looks pretty okay nothing special but I, I bet it'll look fine on the tabletop to give more variety to your uh, miniatures especially with the p-dot camo I feel that it's good to change those camo patterns on miniatures like as you can see I used the brown one in the middle here and the pants and the helmet here so like vice versa if I would do another one I would I would do the helmet as well with the dark gray one match them and do them in different styles that's the visual I've uh, caught from these uh, different photos I've seen and armies painted so I hope this has been uh, somehow entertaining or useful thank you for watching keep it safe and I will talk to you in the next one and if you're wondering what this uh, hay looking thing is it's nothing more than the welcoming doormat that I use for making the uh, wheat fields or because I got pieces of it left over I just cut a small piece of it so using small scissors I cut it low and like spread it out and that's that's how I get these uh, pieces here just super glue it down there on the base and add the grass to hide the rubbery part in some places the rubber is kind of thicker so using a knife I peel it off very slowly and when working with a knife you gotta be careful you don't want to cut yourself I hope this uh, small tip is a bit helpful